first story. OP's Sil demands that she wear more modest clothes around her husband falsely accusing him as a predator. I 33F have been married to my husband 33M for four years. One year ago, I had my daughter. When I was a teenager, I was sawed by a family friend multiple times. This has left me with a lot of complex feelings about my body. My abuser told my parents that the abuse was my fault because I dressed slotty around him. He was 40, and I was 14. For years, I would only wear baggy clothes and not do my hair or makeup. I've gotten some therapy and worked hard to overcome these feelings of self-blame. But being pregnant and having a baby messed with my body image a bit. I have been working out a lot and am really liking my body currently. It feels very freeing. My SIL 29F knows all about my past abuse and my issues with blaming myself and my teenage clothes for my abuse. She is married to my Bill 30M, and the four of us have always gotten along. We are going on a trip with my husband's parents, my Bill and Sil, and their two boys 8 and 6. My Sil texted me and asked me not to bring any bikinis because she had two young boys. I thought this was weird, but I told her that I wouldn't if that was important to her. She came over last weekend, and I had clothes out to pack for our trip. She wanted to see what I was bringing, she framed it in a fun, light-hearted way. She saw my bathing suit and asked me why I was bringing that since she asked me not to bring a bikini. I told her it was not a bikini, but a two-piece covering. She got very quiet and started looking through my pile of clothes. I also had a maxi dress that had spaghetti straps. Again, she asked me if I could bring something more modest. I told her I was uncomfortable, and it was such a big deal for her boys to see me in a dress. She finally admitted that she did not want me to wear any flattering clothes or bathing suits around her husband. She said her husband had been struggling with an adultery addiction, and the clothes I was bringing would make it hard for him, and would be tempting. This is where I may be the arsy hole. I was so grossed out and angry. I told her very assertively that she was crazy if she thought I needed to cover my body to keep her creepy husband from jerking off at me. I told her how wrong she was to say that to me when she knew about my past issues. I also told her she was gross for at first using her kids when the real reason was that she didn't want her husband looking at me. She started crying and left. She called my husband her brother later, crying and asking him to make me wear more modest clothes. My husband completely took my side and told her if it's such an issue for her husband, then maybe they should not come on the trip. My mother-in-law has now gotten involved and is asking me to bring a more covering bathing suit and modest clothes. Edit. For context. My husband's family is extremely religious. Think of the Duggar family as religious. Edit too. Sorry, I never post on Reddit. I'll give more information that has been asked. My bill has never made me feel uncomfortable. In fact, I thought we had a good relationship. He was not raised in the Pentecostal church, but did join when he married my sister-in-law. My husband and I both grew up in church, but have since left. My mill has asked me to bring modest clothes, but she has not mentioned an addiction issue. I assume she knows, but when I look at her message objectively, it could be very possible that my sister-in-law told her I was bringing very skimpy clothes. Also, my husband is paying for the trip completely. I bought my dress recently. I thought it was beautiful, and I was so excited to wear it. Especially since I had a baby nine months ago. I might even return it because it feels like it's tainted, and I just think of my in-laws when I wear it. TLDR. My sister-in-law wants me to wear modest clothing so that her husband isn't tempted around me. I refused and yelled at her. Update. Wow, thank you so much for your support. Especially those of you who shared experiences in the past. My husband has been away for work, but landed early this afternoon. On his layover, he cancelled the reservations for the trip. He is currently on his way to his sister's house to confront my bill. His plan is to show up at their house unannounced and take his brother-in-law out for a drink and talk to him away from my sister-in-law. I will post an update tomorrow. Thank you all so much for your kind words. Ada has no consensus bot. The OP was voted NTA. Relevant comments. A strange loop 414. NTA. Wear whatever you want, whenever you want. You have been through enough in your life with people judging your appearance and trying to gaslight you into thinking your appearance somehow causes trouble. I am so sorry for what happened to you when you were younger. I'm proud of you for putting in the work to overcome something so awful. OP. Thank you so much. I've done really hard work to be able to function and be a good mom. Unfortunately, I think I may be going back to therapy after all this. Commenter. NTA and Def NTA, since I read in a comment of yours that your husband is actually the one that is paying for this whole trip. Are you effing kidding me? You guys are paying, 
and they have the audacity to ask the ones funding a trip for them to cover up. I would find the skimpiest bikinis and outfits I could find, and then tell them they are more than welcome to take their judgmental, mooching arsehole selves back to their own houses, if they didn't like what you were wearing to the place that you guys paid for. OP. The whole reason my husband paid for the trip was so that they, two boys, could have some fun. They never get to go on trips because their parents do not have the financial means. I think that's the main reason I feel guilty about telling them they can't come. It's my brother-in-law who should feel guilty. Jufflip. I'm so sorry you're handling this sort of past trauma and current guilt. But here is where you draw the line in protecting your peace. If you and your husband want to offer something special for the boys, you can save this money and sponsor something for them in the future. But now is not the time to make yourself vulnerable to a misogynistic sill and a creep of a bill. Protect your peace, OP. That's really good advice. I hadn't really thought that we could use the money to have the boys do something without us. That's fun. My daughter is only nine months old, and I definitely don't want to creep around her or a woman who enables him. Update rared it. Hi everyone. I accidentally deleted my OG post last night, but I will post the body of my original post in a comment below. I want to say thank you to all for your support and advice. I especially want to thank the people who damned me with their personal stories of abuse and church trauma. I'm so grateful for you sharing your stories. To answer if you have any questions. I am very average looking by conventional standards. I have a nice body. I'm 5'6 and 120 pounds. Since I had my daughter, I've been going to pilates three times a week. For the first time in my life, I have some abdominal muscle, which I'm very proud of. I don't mean this as a subtle brag. I also put a good amount of effort into the process. I look good by doing my hair and makeup and wearing well-fitting clothes. My sister-in-law is a very attractive woman. She is much taller than me. She has gained about 40 pounds since she had her kids. And I know that she feels a bit self-conscious about it. But she said she's not willing to change. She said that she's a mom, so it doesn't matter what she looks like. I wonder if she's having a bit of depression because she's about to stay without even showering. Again, I'm not saying this to my sister-in-law. I'm just trying to paint a better picture. So for the update, to make things clearer, I will refer to my husband as Tom, and I am Kate. I referred to my sister-in-law, Jill, and my brother-in-law, Jack. My husband showed up at my in-law's house unannounced last night. He said my brother-in-law was happy to see him, and he asked to go for a walk with him so he could talk. One thing that was interesting is that my brother-in-law wasn't under the impression that the trip was still on for this Saturday. My husband said this was the most awkward conversation he ever had. He started by asking Jack, my brother-in-law, if he and his wife were having any trouble because his wife had mentioned that he had an adultery addiction. My brother-in-law rolled his eyes. He said he's only looked at adultery once since Christmas. He looks at it once every couple months. His wife is convinced it's an addiction. He told my husband it's frustrating because he feels shamed for his normal sexual desire. He also confided in my husband that he and his wife have not had sex in over a year, and he's not sure what to do. He said he has suggested counseling, but his wife only wants to see someone from the church who is not a licensed therapist. My husband said, Well, Jill said it was enough of an issue that she didn't want Kate to wear a two-piece bathing suit or a sundress on the trip because it would be difficult for you. He said my brother-in-law was very surprised and upset, and he asked a bunch of questions about the incident. My husband said that my brother-in-law was mortified. My brother-in-law said, Wait, does Kate think I've been thinking about her in that way? My husband told him that was what Jill implied. Again, Jack was mortified. He profusely apologized to my husband and said that's not the case at all. He said he wanted to apologize to me directly. But he didn't want to make me feel more uncomfortable. And he was so sorry. My husband asked him if he had any pictures of me and his phone that he had taken without my consent. He immediately said absolutely not, and gave my husband his phone and told him to look through it. My husband also asked my brother-in-law Jack if he had made any comments about my body to his wife or others. Jackson said that he had made a few comments that he thought were innocent. But in the light of the day, he can understand how they could have been construed otherwise. He said that he had made comments when I was pregnant about me glowing. He also said that recently he has been talking to his wife about how he thought it was adorable that I had made a point to work out and make time for myself after my baby was born. He said that he had mentioned I had looked good, and he knew how hard it is to make time to work out with a little one. Jack apologizes, saying that he realized that these comments he thought were innocent might not have been the most appropriate, and then went forward. He will be careful, but he says so to his wife and others. My husband told him that even though the air has been cleared, the trip is off. 
Jack said he completely understood, and he would tell his boys this morning, and that he would be talking to Jill. About an hour ago, I got a text from Jill saying, My kids are devastated. I hope you're happy. I have ignored her. My husband is going to talk to his parents today, and she wants to give it a few days before you talk to her sister. That's all for now. Thank you again for all of your support. Update my brother-in-law sent this text to my husband about an hour ago. Please share this with Kate if you feel like she's in a good place. Kate, I am so terribly sorry. I know this is really uncomfortable, but I just wanted to let you know that I have never used any thoughts or images of you in an actual way. I feel sick to my stomach, having to say that. I really, truly apologize if I have made comments that made you feel uncomfortable. I'm sure there's more I could say, but I just wanted to let you know how truly apologetic I am for the whole situation. I understand if you do not want to see me and Jill for a while, and that's totally okay. Please don't feel bad about the trip. The boys are fine. This was a good apology, and I tend to believe him. Relevant comments. Ice Wolf Fenris. Is there a chance Jill is cheating on Jack? Just not having SX for a long time gives me that vibe. OP. I would be shocked if that was the case. She was 18, and he was 19 when they got married. He's the only man she's ever been with. Interestingly enough, they got married so young because they were having SX, and her parents found out and pressured them to get married. Commenter. It's unfortunate that the whole problem is that Jill is insecure, and it appears a bit jealous of you. If that's all Jack, I don't see the problem. At least now you know Jack hasn't been creeping toward you. And yet again, Jill can't take any responsibility for her actions and is trying to blame you. You aren't the cause of her kids being devastated. This situation and not being able to go on this vacation are completely on her shoulders. I hope that you, your husband, and the family still go and get away for a bit though. It would be nice to relax after all the BS. OP. My husband still has PTO next week. He is going to see if we can change the plan tickets and go somewhere just him, me, and our daughter. Little bit funny 21. If Jack is telling the truth I suspect he is. Particularly since he so willingly handed over his phone and expressed both a desire to apologize and awareness that you might not be comfortable around him. Then damn that poor guy. His wife is making him out to be a sexual predator. I hope he can get a divorce. OP. Also, my husband believes him, and I trust his judgment. My husband said if he's lying, he's got to be a sociopath or something, because he seemed very sincere and forthcoming. Adventurous basis 280. Holy crap. It sounds like your sister-in-law is having some serious issues. She doesn't want to have SX with her husband, but also doesn't want him to take care of himself. It sounds like she is just reflecting all of our insecurities onto you and blaming it on the bill. Hopefully, this opens his eyes, and he takes action. If she is saying this type of crap to you, who else has she been lying to about him? OP. I suspect she has also been spreading the narrative to her parents, because my mill originally asked me not to bring the dress and to pack more modest clothes. Historical goal 3786. My concern is what she is teaching her kids. OP. This also concerns me. Up to this point, my husband and I have said that we left the church. My husband's family knows our feelings but we know that they can live their lives the way they want to. I'm just afraid that her boys are going to grow up with some twisted ideas about SX and women. It bothered me about growing up in the Pentecostal church. The boys were told they couldn't be alone with girls because they would be too tempting. It made me feel like it taught boys they don't have to control themselves. Second story. My wife keeps her asculity a secret and is now tricking me into staying in the relationship after I serve her divorce papers. My wife 29F and I 34M have been married for four years, and up until a year and a half ago, things were fantastic. Our marriage began to deteriorate after there was a significant drop in SX between us not intimacy, just the actual SX part of the relationship. We would still cuddle and have deep intimate moments talking and just being around each other. But she kept rejecting my attempts at taking things further than kissing. Now we have had no problem communicating, so I made sure to address it early, and we talked and made adjustments. We both made sure to stay in shape. We tried being more adventurous. We went to couples therapy and counseling. And we even tested both of our hormone levels. Everything was normal. Each solution would work for a little while. And then we'd be back to having SX, maybe once a month. I asked her several times if she was no longer attracted to me, which she denied every time. I asked her if I was falling short in the relationship in any other way, to which she said no. Well, about a month ago, she got back from her therapy session and told me that she believes that she's a sexual. And that's the reason for her libido being non-existent as of late. 
I was definitely confused because we had such great SX for a while at the beginning of our relationship. But her telling me that she's now as Xuel was heartbreaking, because everything else is great. Obviously, I'm not going to force her to have SX. So we had a long conversation about our relationship. And I came to the conclusion that we should get a divorce. I say, I, because she immediately rejected the idea and said we would figure something out and wouldn't talk to me about it anymore. I didn't know what to say, so I dropped it. Well, three weeks go by without SX, and I decided that I had to do this for my own mental well-being, so I filed for divorce and had her served with the papers. Last week, when I got home from work, she was going about the day like nothing was wrong. I asked her if she signed the papers, and she flat out said, We are not getting a divorce, changed the subject, and acted like things were normal. Obviously, I thought this was crazy, so I stopped her and said I couldn't be in a marriage devoid of SX and I mentioned that I was being incredibly fair with our divorce. She can keep the house that we bought and paid for with cash. She paid one-third. I paid two-third. I'd take all of the debt, which isn't much. We'd split our savings and investments in half. And she can keep two of our three paid-off cars. I only wanted to keep my sports car. Thankfully, we don't have kids. I love her and wanted her to be comfortable, and I have no problem starting over since I have a good income. But she won't budge or talk about the divorce. This brings us to two days ago. I get home, go to our bedroom, and find my wife's friend 27F in our bed naked. I immediately shut the door, said sorry, and went looking for my wife. I found her in the kitchen and asked what her friend was doing here, and she said that she was here for me. I put two and two together and said that I'm not having SX with other women in place of the woman I chose to marry. She was adamant about saying that I could sleep with her whenever I wanted, and that her friend agreed to it. I couldn't believe things would get this far. So I went back to our bedroom and asked her friend to leave. I packed a bag, and I've been staying in a hotel nearby since that night. My wife, her mother, and her sister keep calling me, but I'm just not interested in hearing what they have to say. This feels like a trick. I just want this whole thing to be over. Does anyone have advice? Is this some kind of ploy for alimony? We do have a prenup. Should I just contact my lawyer and try to force the divorce? I'm really uncomfortable with this entire situation. Edit. We talked last night. I'll update when I get home from work. Edit too. Here's the update if anyone's interested. I'll try to keep this as concise as possible. I feel overwhelmed, so I probably won't bother with another update after this one. My wife came to my hotel last night, and we talked about everything. She told me the full truth and what's going on in her mind. 1. A few of you commented on this in the last post, so you were right. She has always been asexual. She and her whole family have known this since she was 16. Apparently, this is the reason why her last long-term relationship of three years ended. He broke up with her after the SX between them diminished to being non-existent after the first year. She told me that SX is easier for her in the beginning when emotions are running high, but she still needs to force herself to have it. I knew they broke up due to irresolvable differences, but I didn't ask for details, nor did she tell me. After a lot of apologies and crying, she told me that I was the first person she was able to tolerate SX with for so long, and that she did enjoy it a handful of times, but after a while she still felt like she was being sought. I broke down after hearing this and started kicking myself for not catching on to any of this. She said she tried her best to please me as much as she could, too. She still doesn't want a divorce, and she doesn't want the house, cars, or savings. She just wants me and is ready to do whatever it takes to keep me. She even said that she would sign a post stating this. 3. As for her friend, she was there during her last breakup and helped to support her through it. My wife went to her after I brought up divorce and talked things out. Her friend suggested that she open the relationship for me, but she said she didn't want me sleeping with strange women, so her friend volunteered herself to be the one who sleeps with me. My wife thought this was a great idea, which led to the fiasco at our house. I won't comment on her appearance because it doesn't matter, and I don't blame the friend. 4. My lawyer got back to me. You were all right. I don't need her permission, but I will have to wait if I want to push it through. 5. I asked her why she lied to me this entire time, and she said she was tired of being rejected after revealing she was a sexual, so she convinced herself that she would be able to force herself to have SX during the relationship. The hormone testing, the sessions in couples therapy, and all of our solutions were just her buying time to find another way around SX or give herself enough time to build up the strength to start regularly having SX with me again. 6. Our conversation ended with us holding each other in bed and crying for a couple of hours. No, we didn't have SX. She pleaded with me to hold off on the divorce to look for a solution together and left my hotel room. 7. 
I'm now sitting alone, typing this effing post. I guess I found out that we don't share everything with each other. 8. Thank you to everyone who has messaged me directly. I'm still trying to get to all of them. 9. I don't know what I'm going to do. Relevant comments. How long has the wife known about the divorce? OP. We lightly touched on the subject four months prior to getting served. The final push was when she discovered that she was a sexual. I brought up divorce at that time, but she didn't want to talk about it and said she wouldn't consider a divorce. I was stonewalled by that specific conversation. I filed anyway. It was the first time she refused to talk to me about any subject. I was surprised since we share literally everything with each other. Is it a medical issue? OP. If it were a medical issue, I wouldn't have made this post, and I'd be by my wife's side right now. But it isn't the case, and SX is how I show and feel my love. We only get to do this as human beings once, and SX is important to me. Is she depressed? OP. I don't think she's depressed. I'm sure her therapist would have caught it, or she would have told me, but I can't be sure now. Other than SX, things have been normal. I can't imagine that we missed anything. She really did put in a ton of effort. We both did. But thank you. I know we'll both be fine, but I figure it's better to do this now before we accidentally have children. Update. I don't think I can link to my previous post, so just go to my profile I guess, if you care to read the OP. I've tried to read every comment or message and take to heart what most of you had to say. Also, please stop messaging me. I can't respond to everyone. It's too much. I'll make this as short as possible. After my last update, my wife asked me to meet with her about a week later to discuss things with her. I've been staying at an extended stay since that night with her friend. We met at our house and talked for a few hours. She started off with a ton of apologies for how she acted, her lying about her sexuality, and not taking my sexual needs more seriously. Before I could say anything, she presented a signed postnup agreement she had drafted with a lawyer, stating that she doesn't want anything the house, the cars, the savings, everything. I felt like the biggest arsey hole for thinking that she was tricking me for more money. I asked her if she was serious, and she told me to take the postponement with me and sign it when I'm ready. I still haven't signed it. It's in my backpack. I told her that I still think divorce is our best course of action and that we both deserve to find someone who matches our needs. She still refused, and borderline begged me to reconsider. She started crying, and so did I. Seeing her like this was devastating. I told her that finding other women to sleep with me wasn't going to work. What if I develop feelings for them? What if I get one of them pregnant? Do we expect her to get an abortion? She said we'll figure it out as we go along, and to please give her more time to work on other solutions. She's set up appointments for SX and hormone therapy, and she's seeing a SX guru. I said that it sounds like we're going through the same things again, but she was adamant and pleaded with me to wait. There were more apologies on both sides, and we kissed for a while before ending the conversation. Then I went back to my hotel that night. A few days later, I tried texting her, but she didn't respond. So I called her dad, I'm avoiding her mother and sister since they are saying the same things as my wife. Her dad told me that she moved back home, and has been holed up in her room since our talk. She called out of work. He told me that she's barely eating, bathing, or talking to him or her mom. He asked me what I was going to do, but I didn't have an answer for him. He just said he understood and said he would be here to talk anytime I wanted to. So I went back to our house, and a good portion of her stuff was gone. The whole place feels empty. I've been sleeping in one of the spare rooms. I'm planning on flying to my mother's house in a couple weeks to spend time with my family to decompress from this entire situation. I'm still on the divorce side of the fence, but I guess there's no rush. Thank you to everyone for their insight and concern. Seriously, I know we're all strangers, but most of you have been a huge help to my mental health. Seriously, thank you. Also, my cousin uses Reddit and reached out after he found my last post and asked me to shout him out if I made an update. I love you Virgil. Thank you for being there for me. I think I'll just make a quick edit to this post once we reach a resolution for anyone who cares. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, We've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.